Hey guys, welcome in. Trip Eisenhower, Chance Helm McCabe with you. And this guy behind us, Jordan mm. Spieth, has fallen outside of the top 50 in the world, wow. which has implications for upcoming WGC events. Not a favorable position for him. And you know what? He hasn't been missing cuts, but he hasn't been doing enough to help himself out. What do you think is the biggest struggle with him right now? We know the driver is yep. a problem, but his confidence is certainly suffering. It, it's starting to, and and I, I thought by now we would have we would start to see a little better progress with it. The swing looks actually pretty good to me, mm -hmm. but the results aren't there. Now, there always can be a little lag time for a player where the swing is where you want it, but you're not quite it, – it's so funny because your swing can look really good as a player and the ball not go where you want it just because of that little bit of confidence, that little bit of extra release. They're, they're those fine things with golf. But it's not the club in his hand right there. It's not the putter. Uh, he putted great last year. In fact, for the season, he was second in strokes game putting. And right. at times, his putting and chipping was so good that at Bethpage, it was so good that he could overcome hitting the rough at Bethpage and was in contention. And it's just amazing. Which of all places. Which speaks to his talent. Yeah. Uh, at the, in the fall at, at the uh, CJ Cup at Nine Bridges in Korea, same thing. His short game and putting was off the chain, and he finished top ten. His driving was horrible. Now, first time I've seen him this year in 2020 was Torrey Pines. So let's go through his two rounds, Thursday, Friday. Not an issue last year, right? Right. At one point, he was first or second in first and second round scoring. He was up there on the tour in those two rounds scoring. He was dead last in third round scoring and near the bottom in fourth round scoring. Right. Weekends were a problem. Mm -hmm. Last weekend, same thing. Two good rounds, first two rounds. Two bad rounds, the last two rounds. And it's the driver. He never hit more than seven fairways. Now, I will say this, Chantel. I was going to say, Mark Leishman wasn't hitting fairways either, but he made it up with uh, his putter. He but. didn't, Jordan didn't putt well either, but I will say this, it's a can, persistent problem. Okay, when I, I, as an analyst, you kind of look at a couple of things. You look, is he missing the ball both ways? No, he's not. It's mainly his miss to the right. Now I look at distance from the edge of the fairway, which is how far you're missing the ball right. from the fairway. When he was playing great in 2015 and winning tournaments left and right, including majors, his average was about 25, 26 feet from the edge of the fairway. It's now over 40. It's not good. Okay, so 15 more feet. That's five more steps. You're missing it further right than you have been. Right. Those issues have got to get better. He's not hitting, he's hitting about 50% of the fairways. Mm -hmm. He cannot play from there. You know, Roy McElroy, Dustin Johnson, uh, Tiger Wood, all those guys can play a little bit from the rough because they're power players. He's not. He's got to play from the fairway. Mm -hmm. So it, it's one of those things. But one of the good guys in golf, right? I mean, wouldn't you want to see him um, get back to, to doing the things that we know he's capable he's of? He's falling out of relevance, though, because you look at it, I was, I'm always curious to see who's around the top 50 because behind him is Scotty Scheffler, which you and I are a huge fan yeah. of, and he's lingering at 53 right now. He was actually 51 last week. And then guys like Colin Morikawa, they're, they're going to be surpassing him pretty soon. Uh -huh. And so if Jordan Spieth remains the same and he's just chugging along, it's going to be a rude awakening in a year from now. I don't, I don't think he's going to be in the top 50 a year from now. I don't think wow. he's going to be his way up there. I don't. Think about he – I mean, obviously you have a different perspective on this, but the fact that he hasn't switched anything up. What he's doing, how long do you stick with something? He has the same coach. He has the same caddy. And, listen, I hate the when guys give up on – the people around and the team that's made them the success that they were back in 2015 in his case but do you at what point is it time to okay I've got to do something different just to try it I understand that sentiment but guys get chasing rabbits down rabbit holes when they start doing that too and I will say Catch this 22. when I say this the the best over course of history stayed with their coaches through thick and thin mm. Jack Nicholas with his coach. I mean, never changed. Jack Grout and Jack Nicholas were there. Jack was his own best teacher, which is one of the reasons why he was one of the best players. Different. But that was that was part of uh, Jack Grout's appeal with Jack Nicholas was that. You know, um, I, I think Jordan has got to take a little more um, not as dependent on Cameron McCormick. I think that's the issue. I, I, I don't think Cameron's telling him anything wrong. Like right. I said, I look at his swing and it looks good. Only Jordan knows what's going on here. And if there's a little bit of a fear of a miss, 
those little things, that little fear before you hit the ball can cause you to miss or hit or miss a fairway, even if the swing looks exactly the same. Right. So from Cameron McCormick's standpoint, I will take his defense and say, it's nothing that he isn't telling him that's right or wrong. I think it is, but I think Jordan's got to step up and take a little more you know, ownership. ownership of his own deal and, and take control of it and not rely so much on someone else. Because that that is another, uh, take it from me personally, I know relying on a swing coach too much is a, is a really bad way to go. And it, we, we saw it with Tiger Woods for a while, even the best of all time. When he when now he's taken ownership of his swing yeah. and it's all his and look at the results. Right, good point. It's funny because one of the first events I covered for Golf Channel was Pebble Beach mm -hmm. the year that he won. Yeah. And I, I made some observations, not actually covering too many of the fields that he's been in, but I did distinctly remember that Cameron McCormick wasn't there for the next four events. I saw him like, you know, maybe on a Wednesday, but in the last four times I've seen him over the last year, it's like in obsessively. Right. So there definitely has been a change in the way that he utilizes Cameron. So that doesn't, like you said, fall necessarily on the coaching staff, but certainly on what he needs to do yeah. inside here with the confidence. But that brings us to another point that have you ever seen anybody barring no injury like Jordan? He hasn't had any knee arthroscopic surgeries like half the rest of the guys in the top 10. Is there any other player in history that has fallen from grace this hard, this fast, without injury? Well, I mean, Seve. Yeah. You know, but, but, but Seve was Seve was doing swing things. Yeah. And got going was, down that but, rabbit hole. Yeah. It was anybody kind of parallels him in history. I'm trying to think. I mean, Scott Verplank was one, okay. but he hadn't won quite the level that that that. Uh, Jordan had, but Scott lost his confidence with the driver, and he was one of the straightest drivers in the game. Yeah. And he had won on tour as an amateur in college, um, and he he was a, a very very good player. But for a long long time, he lost it. Steve Stricker lost it without injury. Okay, Steve Stricker won the World Golf Event in Australia, the match play in the early 2000s, and for about five years, he lost his confidence with the driver. He did not play very well at all, and Steve was a very, very good putter. Now, Steve hadn't won majors. He contended in a major. He almost won at Sahali that VJ won in the, in the late 90s. Uh, so he would contended in majors and showed the, the things of Steve. Of course, he still doesn't have that elusive major championship, which he's got, not going to get. Right. But Jordan's got plenty of those. He's got only one leg of the Grand Slam still left to go, the PGA. Um, I, I, it is rare, but they do come back from it. I mean, Scott Verplank came back from it. Um, Jordan Spieth will come back from it. I do think so because the putting and chipping is so good. And I look at Steve Stricker as an example of a guy who he's going to learn to drive the ball in the fairway again. I don't know when. I thought it would have been fixed by now. We'll see. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because you look at the guys who have come back from things, whether that be switching things up with their swing or injury. The hardest thing that has to be able to come back from is getting it yeah, figured right out inside, yeah, yeah, in between your ears. Yeah. All right, well, if you like what you saw, if you want to see it trip all over again, you can uh, <laughs> check them out on Golf Central, 6 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or on our YouTube channel, YouTube channel. See you back here.